Hello, bonjour and ahoy. I'm Roger Hilton, Defense and Security Research Fellow at Globsec, coming to you from Vienna, Austria. In mid-December, a French military bioethics panel cleared the development of technological upgrades for its armed services. The panel stated that the French armed forces may develop and deploy these augments in order to preserve operational superiority. Although the use of cyber soldiers has been widely cited in science fiction, its development now is the latest trend of countries who are looking to maintain and increase its competitive edge when it comes to machine-human fusion. Here with us to unpack some of these very complicated issues is Marek Rosa, CEO and founder of Good AI and Keen Software House based in the Czech Republic. Marek, thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm. Hello. So Mark, let's get right into it. My first question for you is, what are the immediate and long-term ethical implications of having enhanced soldiers on the battlefield? Mm -hmm. So the short-term implications, uh, here would be some examples. So one is that uh, whether soldiers' consent, consent be enhanced is required, and whether a descent would negatively impact soldiers' career. So that's one thing. And the other is whether the enhancements are reversible or how they uh, how the soldier integrate into society after he returns to civilian life. So that would be the short term and long term uh, implications are in how would the enhancements escalate the arms race, arms race dynamics between state actors and non state actors. And this is one of those situations when if a critical threshold is state, they become irreversible. So those are two things that come to my mind. Yeah, Mark, a lot of the literature out there, it doesn't say what it's like for the re-involvement of these soldiers back into society, the way prisoners have to come back into society. So that's a great point. My second question to you is, we're entering uncharted territory when it comes to the performance of these enhanced soldiers, as you know, especially in theater operations. Should the international community consider regulating these enhancements for the greater good? Uh, yes, yes. I think performance of enhanced soldiers should be regulated by international community. Otherwise, we risk getting into an unknown territory with unpredictable cascading consequences on the battlefield and also in a civilian life. My personal opinion is that I wouldn't restrict life-saving defense and non-lethal enhancements, especially those that don't violate the hypocritic oath. State soldiers are here to protect citizens. They need to be competitive. For example, exoskeleton for carrying heavy lower uh, heavier exactly, load, yeah. action or reducing fatigue, I don't see problem there. On the other side, uh, there is a class of enhancements that should be banned or heavily regulated by international community. For example, uh, eugenic or genetic practices, uh, everything that could jeopardize the soldier's integration into society. Uh, are the enhancements uh, reversible, as mentioned before? Uh, or for example, countering the need for sleep or altering the capacity to make moral decisions. Uh, reducing uh, soldiers' capacity to experience trauma, enhance to not feel pain or some little enhancements, you know. Uh, so I think these things should be like straight banned or at least uh, heavily regulated. Yeah, I mean, you bring up this great uh, sort of dichotomy of sort of the advantages on the civilian side and then sort of the negatives on the military side, which segues excellently to our third and final question. As you said, do you envision some of these enhancements for the greater good of society with a civilian application? For instance, when it comes to firefighters or first responders, I mean, you cited very briefly sort of being able to carry more or endure more pain. So what's your take on the civilian side of these new technological enhancements? Yes, I think, as always, uh, the military technology can, can transfer to civilian applications. And I think there could be useful civilian applications. So, for example, one is that you also mentioned the exoskeleton or maybe uh, sensors that can monitor the fatigue of the firefighter or the uh, first responder. And, for example, reading signals that are presently not available, predicting failures, you know, basically knowing more about the person who is like, doing the dangerous job. I think that can be very, very helpful. So I would not ban, you know, these kind of uh, applications. Yeah, well, I mean, Mark, thanks so much for your time. It seems as if this debate has just got started both on the military and civilian side. Uh, I'm sure this is not the last time we're going to hear from you. So thanks again for your expert input, Marek, and we look forward to talking to you again from Globsec. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ciao. Bye -bye.